Here tonight to talk about the hummus wars. Is this a monumental waste of garbanzo beans, or is there something more to it? Um, the hummus war started when a few years ago, a group of Lebanese and Israeli chefs uh, started making bigger and bigger bowls of hummus, trying to have the Guinness Book of World Records. Um, and after a little bit, the press kind of, uh, they caught on, they caught wind to this. Uh, and the last two bowls of hummus that were made is when this really started getting some press. In January of 2010, a group of chefs in Abu Ghosh made a four-ton bowl of hummus, which is an enormous bowl of hummus. Um, not to be outdone, though, the Lebanese, in May of last year, uh, made what is, is still currently the uh, Guinness Book of World Record for largest bowl of hummus. It is right here. It's a 12 and a half ton oh bowl of hummus. It's 10,500 kilograms. There's over eight tons of chickpeas and multiple tons of both uh, tahini paste, the sesame seed paste, and lemon juice. And tonight, for my presentation, we're going to break the record. So I don't know if we came ready to, to make hummus go. <laughs> so uh, the, when, this, uh, when this bowl of hummus was made, a lot of the tone, a lot of the press stories um, was these two countries are already fighting to another reason to, to pick on each other. Um, and things, you know, this is a big waste of food. And I, I myself have a food blog, and uh, I've been writing about the, the hummus wars for some time. And my title after this bowl of hummus was made was, The Lebanese the past weekend uh, set the record for the largest bowl of hummus in the Guinness Book World Records. It came in weighing at, oh wait, I forgot, who gives a shit? <laughs> and, it, and the way I thought at the time was, this is just people wasting their time. Again, we have too many things going on between us. Why do we have to fight over uh, who has the biggest bowl of hummus? Um, but then I started thinking, maybe there's something more to this. Obviously, somebody does give a shit. So um, I want to talk about what there is beyond just this monumental waste of garbanzo beans. Um, the story starts in 2009 when the uh, Association of uh, Lebanese Industrialists petitioned the European Union to have hummus, uh, baba ganoush, tabbouli, and arak, among some other foods, recognized as being of Lebanese in origin. Uh, which would give them uh, legal rights to this and basically make any company in a country other than Lebanon who makes this food have to pay Lebanon royalties if they're going to call it hummus or arak or whatever, whatever the food it might be. This is not dissimilar to uh, feta cheese in Greece or Parmesan cheese in Italy. Uh, champagne wine has to come from a certain region in France. So the concept exists and they wanted to have it applied to, to hummus. Um, the petition was, ever, was never actually filed. Um, and a lot of this comes from, uh, it has an economic uh, basis in its origin. Uh, there's hundreds of millions of dollars of hummus sold around the world, and the majority of, uh, of the brands sold are Israeli. Um, maybe brands that you know, uh, Akhla, Tsabar, Sabra, which is actually owned by Pepsi. Um, and it's mostly Israeli companies uh, taking advantage of what's becoming more and more of a worldwide craze for hummus. And the Lebanese felt like they were getting the short end of the... Uh, uh, the steak, and we weren't having a big enough, big enough part of the, of the hummus bowl uh, instead of the pie. So the, uh, the, there's this economic element to it, but an interesting comment was made by the president of the association, a guy named Fadi Aboud. He said, not only are the Israelis stealing our land, they're stealing our civilization and our cuisine. And what I found interesting in that was the connection between civilization and cuisine and food and one's national identity. And he felt like it wasn't enough that there was the economic element to it, that the Lebanese weren't uh, getting the, the royalties he felt they were, but that Israel was, was taking away part of Lebanon's identity. Uh, so the question is, is there, is there a basis to that? Is Israel, in fact, stealing is, uh, Lebanon's culinary identity? Is hummus, in fact, uh, a uh, dish of Lebanese origin? Um, the answers are not entirely clear, and they're not really in favor of Lebanon um, as well. Uh, the chickpea itself comes from the Caucasus region. Oh, I forgot this other slide. It's actually an extension of uh, the comic book series that we just heard about. Uh, this is kind of a comic kind of uh, demonstrating the absurdity of the, of the hummus. There's a picture of uh, Bibi and Nasrallah here throwing hummus at each other. Um, so the, um, going back to where I was, the, the chickpea itself, um, the origin of the bean, comes from the, the Caucasus region, which today is uh, what we know as Eastern Turkey, spreading to Azerbaijan, Northern Iran. Again, this is not, not Lebanon. Um, and hummus bitahina, which is the Arabic word for the hummus spread that we know, 
uh, also it's uh, unlikely to be of Lebanese origin. There's uh, legends that it uh, was first made by Salah Adin, the uh, Islamic ruler in Egypt in the 12th century. Uh, some of the earliest recipes of what we know as hummus today were in fact found in Syria. So it's unclear from this evidence that uh, hummus would be Lebanese in this way. And in my opinion, hummus is, is a kind of food that you can't apply to any one country. Uh, the Lebanese certainly have a strong history with hummus and they prepare it their own way, but so do the Israelis. Um, there's, uh, hummus also varies within Israel by the region. We have Masab Chastel hummus, which a good kind of hummus, maybe we have it Abu Hassan in Yafo, which is typical to the southern part of Israel. You have Mashal style hummus, which is prepared in a different way, which is typical of the Galil in the northern region of Israel. Uh, Egyptian hummus is made with a large amount of fava beans, and it looks almost more brown than the typical hummus beige color than a lot of people are used to. And the, the point is that hummus varies by region. Um, in Lebanon, they serve as an appetizer. In Israel, you can eat it. Uh, you know, it was a full bowl, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and it's become very much a part of Israeli culture. And if you've seen Don't Mess With The Zohan, then I guess apparently you brush your teeth with hummus as well. <laughs> so hummus, in each country, hummus has been made its own. I don't think hummus is any more Lebanese than it is Israeli, than it is Turkish, Syrian, Egyptian, or any other country. And while hummus is no, is, is, uh, no doubt a part of uh, Lebanese culture and Lebanese identity, it's also part of Israeli identity, it's a part of all these other countries' identity. Um, and I think what I took from the hummus wars after initially thinking that is this absurd, you know, food fight between two countries that have much bigger issues to think about is that uh, I underestimated how much food is a part of who we are. It's just as important of our identity as it is language, as it is the, the TV shows we grew up on, the comic books that we grew up on, and uh, the music that we listen to. Um, so in conclusion, um, I would just hope that one day we uh, hear on the news that uh, Bibi and Asrala have met in some, uh, had some secret meetings in some European capital, they're calling it the Hummus Accords, <laughs> and they're trying to work out the last remaining important issue between the two countries, who has the right to the Hummus, who has the best Hummus between Lebanon and Israel, both countries which have great Hummus. <laughs>